Sam Harvey, welcome to the show, mate. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. How are you getting on, man? Well, no, no, no. The question is, how are you getting on? How have you recovered after what you've put yourself through in the last fortnight? Uh, um, I guess I guess I'm recovered. I mean, I'm not dead, so uh, that's, that's a good start. And, uh, yeah, I guess I'm just a little bit worse for wear, to be honest, but I think you'd probably be pretty worse for wear too if... Uh, if you'd given your body a hiding that I've uh, repeatedly given myself for the last couple of weeks. I just can't even get my head around the numbers, mate. Um, so on Monday, you finish 43 hours, 288 Ks, and that's 10 days after tying the world record in Australia, 677 Ks, running nonstop for, for four days or 101 hours. What's the, what's the bit that hurts the most? I mean, is that stupid? Is it your feet? Yeah, you kind of get used to it. I mean, at, at, at that point, you're so deep, everything kind of hurts and you dissociate. I mean, yeah, certain pains become a little bit more acute or severe at, at times. But yeah, you kind of, you just normalise being in a state of full body pain and yeah, you carry on. But yeah, the, the feet are obviously pretty clobbered. Uh, the joints, they get uh, they get pretty worn, so your hips and your knees and your ankles are gen- generally throbbing or, or or got a sharp searing pain, and uh, yeah, that that's basically life for a few days. How long does it take you then to fully get back to what you would consider to be normal after doing one of these ultras? Uh, it really depends. I I, I definitely have uh, adapted quicker. I, I I think my body's made adaptations to basically say, oh, well, he's going to keep doing this to us. We may as well fix up and and get ready for the next one. And so rather than it taking months or weeks to recover, like I I can generally go for a run uh, within a a day or two after them, depending on how much of a beating I've taken. Obviously, if you do 101 hours of it, then you're a bit worse for wear and maybe you're not going to go for a run for, I don't know, a week. But yeah. A week, a week is about a, a good turnaround at, at a beer, at a beer minimum. You got to run a circuit uh, consecutive, consecutively of six and point uh, seven k every hour, and then are you allowed a break? And how long does that break last for? Yeah, for sure. So ba- basically, with the backyard ultra format, uh, <clears throat> they'll set up a six point seven kilometer course over any kind of terrain. It might be road, it might be gravel, it might be mountains, it might be flat, it might be very steep. But yeah, basically you've got a 6.7 kilometre loop and you've got an hour to do that. Everybody starts on the hour at the same time. And if you finish faster than the hour, then whatever's left over, you get to sit down. And if you uh, if you don't come in very uh, very early, so, so you, you come in a minute before the bell, then basically you've got to go straight out again and you don't get a rest. So yeah, people are having anywhere from two minutes rest up to 15 minutes rest, and it's just a, a fine balancing act of, of how much of a rest you want versus how fast you want to go and how much you want to damage your body while you're out there. What's the worst bit of it, Sam, and where do you go during those worst bits? There's lots of bad bits, honestly. Uh, and, I mean, the the 43-hour one that I did uh, after the 101-hour the 43-hour one, I was in a bad place for most of it, uh, especially the second day of running. Basically, all of the Sunday, I was just... I'd resigned myself to the fact that I I didn't think I was going to be the finisher because there's only one finisher. And that's the person who's left standing. And I thought, well, I'm just going to stay out here all day and, and continue to, to uh, mutilate my soul a little bit. And, yeah, that's essentially what I did all of Sunday. So... Yeah, lots of lots of dark places, lots of pain. Uh, I was on the Sunday. I was doing something that I never do, and I was like shouting at myself, and I was like a lot of audible hate towards myself. Wow! Uh, for for being cocky and arrogant on the on the first day and and going a little bit too fast. And um, yeah, I was basically intentionally punishing myself, knowing that I wasn't going to win, but I wanted to um, I wanted to endure the suffering so that I kind of learnt the lesson of, of being too cocky on the Saturday. I really, really kind of beat that lesson into myself. And then, yeah, by the time it was the Sunday night uh, and I'd kind of finished destroying myself, I, I realised that we were actually getting 
towards the end of the race where it was it was within winnable territory and I was like, oh, actually, you, you're not dying. Like, you, you can you can complete this. So I, you know, just, I changed the mindset and, and, and got into into attack mode, really. Sam Harvey, but, uh, ultra marathon champion that you, that you are. God, man, that's the hurt locker and the hate locker all at once, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, big, big time. I don't, I don't generally go into places like that. I, uh, uh, I mean, I, I prepare, I'm, I'm calculated. I, I enjoy riding the wave and being in control and just being a, a, I guess, a bit of a professional about how I come about a race. And and so it it is enjoyable. It's not kind of suffering for the most part. And there is suffering, but you can kind of get through that. Not too bad. Where yeah, this 43 hour race was unlike any I've ever done before because obviously I was coming off the back of the 101 hour. No one really. Well, a lot of people didn't think I could do it, and a lot a lot of people thought I shouldn't do it and and even I was thinking damn yeah maybe maybe I shouldn't have done this and uh yeah I guess I proved everyone including myself wrong which is cool it sounds like just such a, a battle of mind over matter is it 100% 100% uh I mean I when when people go really really deep and and they've been running for a couple of days with me and then they finally give up I generally ask them how much did you have left in you? And some of them say, oh, I, I, could have, I could have gone for X many hours longer, but I was soft. And then some of them say, oh, no, I couldn't go any longer. And I say, nah, you're lying because you were able to finish the last lap and you just decided not to go out on the next one. Uh, and, I mean, if you can finish a lap, then you can start the next lap. And if you can start that lap, then you can finish that lap. And unless you completely collapse or you um, or, or you take more than the hour to complete the loop and you time out, and then, yeah, you, you've got more in the tank and it's just a, a, a decision that you've made that you don't want to go any further. It's, it's not that you can't. And, and so that's where the beauty in the sport is, is you're finding the limits of your mind rather than the limits of your body quite often. Why did you decide to do this? I mean, you know, you're obviously able to run marathons. You're obviously able to run long distance or anything. I mean, have you, you know, have you been a good middle distance runner or a sprinter or maybe I don't know a, a ten thousand meter runner? Yeah, no, I, uh, I dabbled in a whole heap of different sports. Started with high school rugby and then yeah, been doing a lot of endurance sports, cycling, uh, triathlon, mountain bike racing. I, uh, I I did a few years of amateur boxing and 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 I was actually in the ring fighting and. Yeah, I just I was I was pretty good at a lot of sports, and I yeah eventually picked up uh, ultra marathon in 2018, and I guess maybe running is the thing that I've been most naturally good at, and uh, yeah I, I kind of I'd been doing a couple of 5k and 10k races in, in the US and Ireland while I was travelling, come back to New Zealand and then basically just jump away from 5 10k races up to up to my first ultra marathon and then I did 50k and then I did 100k and then 160k and then I jumped up to 250k and yeah basically been just tossing off uh 200 plus kilometer races 300 and then the 677 or whatever it was more recently and wow. yeah I, I I guess I like those I I can I it wasn't it wasn't until after a few years of of actually doing ultra marathons that I finally I uh, decided it would be fun to do a, a half marathon. And, uh, yeah, those are, those are quite nice. You're only out for an hour or so, and, <laughs> and you're done. <laughs> What's the next one you're going to do, mate? You're a nutcase. I love it. Brilliant. Uh, next on the cards, basically... In the most loving I, way, I say that. I say that in the most loving way, mate. You know that, yeah. Oh, no, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I've, I've basically... I've done a an ultra marathon every every month since February... So February, March, April, May, June, so it's July, whatever. Uh, so yeah, uh, which is at the upper limit of, of of what you should be doing realistically to 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 attain longevity in the sport. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to have like kind of a couple of weeks to recover from this last wee effort, and then I will then I will have a, a couple of months. Of, of building a really really training towards uh, the world championship in October which is uh, 
yeah, uh, something that I've qualified for and heading over to the US to do. And yeah, basically the plan is to, to win the world championship then and, and break the world record uh, again, but absolutely kind of demolish the current record. And then from there, just continue building and, and doing bigger and bigger stuff and setting records and expanding uh, what humans perceive as, as being physically possible in the, in the sport of running. Look, my dear old mate, Mike King, of course, he's the man behind I Am Hope. I love you to bits for running for that charity and raising money. Um, and also, you must have a lot of sponsors and supporters, mate. So lay them down on this. Who have you got to thank? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'd like to thank Faith Pizza and Christchurch. Uh, they've been uh, with me since day one. And they are, without a doubt, the best uh, pizza, pizza place in Christchurch. Uh, also, the Crank House Bicycle Studio in Hornby. Uh, Currens, I've been using their purple capsules uh, for the last few months to maximise my recovery and my performance in sport, and they've been a massive asset those last few months. Off-piece provisions have been providing me with uh, with plant-based proteins. Uh, I'm by no means a vegan. I'm, I'm very much a, a meat-for-every-meal kind of guy, but uh, they're, uh, they're, they're vegan biltong and jerky and pork crackling is just phenomenal product and has been something that I've been using in my racing and then uh, lastly and uh, definitely not least is I Am Hope which I'm now an ambassador for and raising money for their charity so uh, yeah if uh, if this has inspired you at all or, or you uh, believe in the cause uh, feel free to, to find my give a little uh, Sam Harvey uh, and uh, yeah drop a few dollars in there because it's going towards a, uh, a massive... Devlin. Unbelievable! Incredible! The Platform.